Right, we're going to check out this new 22 rifle by Daria today. Um, you can see there on the stock it says TM22A18. Uh, but I think to find this one you got to search like TM22 standard. So they have like an all metal version like AR looking type with this stamp on it. And there you can see the other version on the side there. And I was going to say uh, you might see it marketed as Rock Island Armory or RIA there such as this one. Um, these are called the TM22A18 also, or A20 if it has a 20 inch barrel. So I don't know why they both say A18, A20, even though they're obviously completely different designs. And some place I find it, it just calls it the TM22. Other places, the TM22S. And other places, the TM22S18. And other places, the TM22A18. So uh, there's the dysfunction with that. Uh, but thanks to my buddy John at Fuku YT for loaning it for the review today and letting us record on his range. This one's got a 18 inch barrel. First thing I notice is it's like super light. Comes in at like 3.7 pounds without the scope. The bolt is ambi. As you can see there, we got it on the other side so you can switch it to whichever side you want. It's got like a little plastic rear flip up sight here. You see there, I just folded it down or you can flip it up it's kind of hard to get my finger in there with the scope um, and it's windage and elevation adjustable because i noticed that this has got space in there and it's hard to see but you just have to take my word for it there's a pin that holds it in place but right here there's a little allen head screw that goes through it you can turn it to make it go left and right for your windage and then on the front here you see how this is like spring loaded well, underneath the front of that, it rests against another screw that has an Allen head in it. So you can raise or lower that, which will adjust your uh, elevation point impact up and down. Now you got a picket tinny rail up top here, but this is plastic. So I know a lot of guys aren't going to like that. You know, 22 doesn't get that hot though. So I don't think you're really going to have any issues with this plastic warping from heat and, you know, throwing your zero off or anything like that. I think it would take a lot of heat. It seems pretty robust. Like I pull on it pretty hard to get it to move at all and I believe this barrel is free floated as well so this is just kind of sitting there it's not like attached to it or anything um, so you do have that but it is pretty large robust piece there so I'm not sure that you would have an issue um, losing zero from that uh, but this thing comes in this pretty new offering here um, again you know they've been under the Rock Island name but I think the Rock Island was mostly the AR looking one so I believe with you know the more traditional stock like this and all that this is a newer version here but yeah super light coming in a hair under four pounds and uh this at least what we've been seeing locally is coming in the low 100 so uh potentially even a little less than like the savage 64 and the mossberg 702 plankster it just depends on where you're at and whatnot so but um low 100s there so coming in that same range as the other budget rifles there you got a rubber butt pad here you see this on both sides um, we've been seeing in the images where it's got like a cheek riser but this one didn't come with the cheek riser for some reason so we're not sure if that's like an option with a slightly different model where you pay a little more to get the cheek riser and they just use the same stock whether you get it or not we don't really know and yay more confusion in this picture at this particular vendor where they were calling it both the tm22 and the tm22 sa18 um it does not have those on the, <laughs> the stock back there so who knows um the ergonomics pretty comfortable i like the uh even got some texture up here where it's smooth and of course you have these grip panels here and these little cutouts here give you a decent amount of grip there too so also another cool feature of this it's like integrated in the stock Let's see if i can do this one handed there we go this little cap slides off and you got a little pick rail here so you can mount a flashlight uh, i think it's more you know for putting a bipod up there but you might be able to get a flashlight or something up there if you wanted that on it instead i mean it's not like the most grippiest stuff but it's not super slick either like i felt slicker so a decent amount of uh, grip grip on this rifle i'm gonna get a measurement on this trigger for you for the weight here in a second um, but this actually is a pretty nice trigger for you know such a low-end rifle like this so um, there's not a whole lot of creep. I got a, the first few times I did it, there was like no creep. I got to try real hard and slow to actually get the creep. So I'll try to do that now. There was a tad. And then it goes. And like I said, I have to really try to get that. 
and it's a real nice crisp break so it's actually got a really nice dang trigger for the price point check out this trigger weight but i gotta give a thanks to my buddy cranky gun reviews uh, he got tired of me saying i'm i need to get one of these so he just went ahead and got me one so i really appreciate that so this is actually the first time we're using it on the channel to check the trigger on this thing all right let's see what this comes in at get it on there right That one said 5.2, try again. I tried one off camera and I got like a high four. See that says 410 there. So it seems like, it might depend on where I place it on there or how I pulled or whatever, but 5.3, so somewhere between a high four and a low five pound, so about a five pound trigger. Now I'm curious here, we're gonna start off real close at 12 yards because I noticed down here, I just took some shots off camera just to try it out real quick before I started recording on that bottom dot there. You can see it looks like one shot, but the one right below that bottom dot is actually two shots. Uh, but this is the ammunition we're using. So just the arms core here, uh, the Aguila. So the arms core is a 36 grain hollow point. The Aguila is 40 grain solid. And then we got the good stuff here, the good cheap stuff. CCI standard velocity uh, 40 grain round nose there and uh, I like using these because these actually shoot really well for how cheap they are so they're a lot more accurate than most of the bulk pack stuff out there but most people know that you know CCI standard velocity shoots pretty dang good for budget ammo so we'll try that last all right so again just uh, 12 yards here to start so we'll start out with three of those arms core and I just go ahead and go back to that bottom red dot that I already shot at. Again, that looks like one hole, but it's two below it. So that's about where we should be hitting. Of course, you're going to be low here, you know, uh, impacting compared to where you're aiming this close range. So they're all going to be low. But here's three arms core at that bottom red dot. Well, that was interesting. I still see it. It's faded away now. No, oh, that one sounded. I don't know because I had ears on, but there's smoke went everywhere. I wonder if it was slightly out of battery or something. I mean, let's let's check that here real quick. I mean, I saw it hit the paper down there. So yeah. So I mean, it wasn't a squib, but I'm just wondering why it. It sounded weird to me and there was like a lot of smoke coming out of the chamber there. I'm wondering if you can get this. Well, it closes it if you try to fire it out of battery. See how it shoots it forward? So I'm not quite sure what happened there. I'm going to double check this bore real quick before we continue though. Well, no bore obstruction. The barrel looks good, so I'm not sure what that was about. Anyways, back to that bottom dot. Arms core. So, all right. So we'll go to the left dot now, and this will be the Aguila. all three in the same hole so it looks like yeah they're all slightly off to the left for me and then the top one cci standard and i know i shot faster but i mean it's pretty easy to shoot 12 yards it's crazy because i got a better group with that aguila there but we'll see what happens out here at 50. Now it does have last round hold open, but it holds uh, against the mag there. So if you remove the mag, the bolt shuts forward and there's no way, some guns you can press the mag release forward like this, pull the bolt back and then let it go and it'll catch on this, but not such with this one. So it does hold open on the last round uh, with the ma empty magazine inserted. Now I can't remember if I tried or not, but you might be able to flip that magazine latch backwards and then maybe it would hold the bolt. I can't remember if I tried. All right, we'll move out 50 yards now, and I was going to say it was like dead 
calm out here. There's an occasional three or four mile an hour that kicks up, and so we'll shoot in between those, but go out here 50 yards on the same shoot and see. See how it does. <clears throat> and again, we'll start with the arms core first, the Aguila, and then the CCI. And I'll do two fouling shots between each group. That way, you know, clearing it out for the ammo change. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. And then we'll shoot our five shot group. We'll do that with each one. <clears throat> all right i am getting a little bit of movement out there off this bag i mean i'm pretty well keeping it on the orange but i can see my crosshair moving around in that orange a little bit and i think the trigger is throwing me a little bit too with being a little heavier than i would like for you know precise target shooting like that but overall not bad so now we'll try the aguila here and again i'll do the two fouling shots first Oh, stupid camera thing. I don't know how much of that you guys got to see before it spun, but we definitely got a better group with the Aguila there. And now the CCI standard velocity. Hey, that's pretty good. I think that one that went slightly low left was me. I was like, oh man, of course that one, we're doing good. But I think it was me. So I want to come down here and show you guys these groups and get a measurement on them real quick. But I got to say, I'm really impressed. Not so much with the arms core, but it looks to be just over an inch with these. And I, I really believe I pulled that one. Might have to try a, a few more, go back up. But uh, the arms core there... Let me shorten this a little bit here. Oh, that's too short. Ah, trying to do everything one-handed while recording. You know how it is. So, oh, it depends on, you know, if I hold the camera right and all that. Of course, we got, you know, a little splatter. If we do center to center there, right, uh, that's coming in one and a half. If we do edge to edge to the holes, you know, obviously you're just going to be a hair over one and a half there. <clears throat> Let's see what this guy is here. So, ow, ow. Edge to edge, it's right at one inch. Edge to edge on the holes. If you go center to center, then obviously we're going to be a little less than one inch there. But edge to edge, again, see it depends on how I hold the camera. But we're right at a one inch group at 50 yards with that cheap little budget rifle. With cheap budget ammo, uh, that was the Aguila. And I, that stuff always shoots really good for me. This stuff's not too bad, and I get this for like three a box, and this is like three fifty four, depending on where you go. Um, and then CCI standard again. I really think I flung that shot, so I'm probably gonna try a few more with our our best contender here. I gotta get lower for this one. <sighs> Let me see here. It's not much smaller, if any, but I really think I pulled that one shot. So. Um, yeah, edge to edge, a little over an inch. So if we go center to center, that one's right at about an inch. So it doesn't really look like it, but that group, because of that one flyer, is actually just a hair bigger than this one. Again, it doesn't really look like it. It looks smaller, but that's because it grouped all four in that little tiny spot there. You could cover that with a quarter easy. Um, so we just had that one flyer that I think was me. So we're going to come back here. Uh, you know, I might 
I don't want to mess with the scope too much because he had it set the way he wanted. I already brought it to the right slightly or we would have been further left down here. Uh, but we'll go up there, we'll figure something out, shoot another group or two with that CCI standard, see if I can do better. All right, we're getting serious now. I'm going to see what this thing can really do. I'm pretty good off my bag here, but, you know, this was no rear mount. So now I got it set up to where it's real dead steady. So we'll try again and see what it can really do with the standard velocity. So I did shoot some more groups, but in the interest of keeping this video shorter and more entertaining for you guys, just go ahead and skip here and show you the results. So I must have done a pretty good job off my normal bag because even with the added support of that rear bag, which did make me a little more steady, I could not get any better groups. So I took two more with the CCI standard velocity, and those are circled in that aqua collar. And then I took one more group, and I did do the uh, fouling shots prior. Um, purple there with the Aguila Super Extra 40 grained uh, round nose or solid, whatever you want to call them. And I'm still getting about one inch groups down here. So there you go, guys. This thing is a shooter. I'm blown away for you know, the accuracy you get with the value. This is probably the most accurate rifle I've seen at least for 150 or under. Um, so this thing shoots really dang good. Again, check out John's channel. Uh, he did a review with it, put some different ammo through it too. So if you want to see how, how it does with some different stuff, and maybe he did a little better than me, go check out his channel. Well, thanks for stopping by checking this one out today. If you guys want to get yourself any products you see me using my videos, like my shooting bag there, earmuffs, target stand, paper targets, steel targets, and way more, links in the description for all of that. Also, if you want to help support the channel, please check out and use my campsite page. But thanks for watching as always guys and I hope to catch you on the next one.